Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be a reading vlog. So I'm planning to read four romances for this kind of weekend reading vlog, I guess. It's currently Friday. I'm going to start reading tomorrow, but I don't exactly know what I'm reading yet. I am going to ask you guys or my Instagram followers to help me decide what four books I should vlog. So in my spring reading plans video, I mentioned like all of the books I'm going to talk about right away. I mentioned how I would be down to vlog any of the books in that video. And I want to film a reading vlog this weekend. I really want to read some romance titles. So I thought might as well do a reading vlog for some of them. I don't know which ones you guys want me to vlog. I don't know which ones you want more of my thoughts on. Obviously for my reading vlogs I go way more in depth than I do in a wrap up. So I have I think nine books here that you guys can pick on my Instagram. I don't really know how I'm going to do it yet but we'll figure it out. <laughs> the um, nine books that I can't pick from yet are Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez, The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon, How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams, You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria, Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lisa K. Adams, Well Played by Jen DeLuca, and then finally the last two I have are Much Ado About You by Samantha Young and The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. So I don't know how I'm going to do this on my Instagram, but I'm going to post a couple of stories, I think, and maybe just ask you guys to, should I do it in a poll? Because I want to pick four of them, but I don't know how I'm going to do that on my Instagram. So yeah, as I said, I won't be reading until tomorrow, but I wanted to get these posts up and stuff so that tomorrow, in the morning I can just like go ahead and start reading because I did want to read two tomorrow on Saturday and then two on Sunday. Okay I'm gonna figure it out and then I will show you guys what I want to do. Okay so I'm pretty sure I figured out my Instagram post. I took a picture, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I just took a picture of them kind of all lined up on my bed. I decided to just do a question box. Yeah I guess I'll show you guys what I'm posting here. It doesn't really matter because obviously this will be over before that, but I just said I'm doing a weekend reading vlog. I'm planning to read four books in total, so which ones do you want me to vlog? I hope that'll be good enough. I don't really know what else to do. So I'm just going to post that to my story. The four most mentioned ones I will pick, and that'll be that. Because honestly, I'm in the mood to read any of them. They're just over here, so... We'll see what you guys decide on Instagram, and that's why you should follow me on Instagram, because I could do more of these type of things. I literally just posted it. I want to see if anybody said anything yet. Oh, somebody already responded, and they said they're roommates. I'm going to leave this for a couple of hours, and then I think later tonight I will decide what I read tomorrow. So, very exciting. Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's actually not morning. It's like afternoon. It is... 1.30. I had a little bit of a busy morning. I posted my anti-TBR tag today and I did get like I think two kind of negative comments which normally doesn't bother me. I really don't care. I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute actually. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm actually going to be reading for this vlog. So uh, as I said I asked you guys on Instagram to help me pick which four books you wanted me to do for this vlog and I waited all overnight to let you guys respond and I think I got like 20 responses, maybe 25. And I'm actually surprised by a few that you guys wanted me to read the most. So the one with nine total votes was The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. I feel like a lot of people really love this so I think that's why you guys want my opinion on it to see if I will also love it. And then you had me at Ola had eight votes. So this was the runner up as well. So these two I will definitely be reading. And then seven votes. It was the X talk, which I'm not surprised about. I feel like a lot of people want to know if I'll like this because there has been more mixed reviews about it now that it is out. So we'll also see how I feel about that one. And then with six votes, we have Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. These are the four 
that I'm going to read for this vlog. I am also very excited to see what my opinions are on these, so I cannot wait to dive in. I don't know which one I will start with, to be honest. Maybe I'll start with the one that's voted the highest, so I guess I will start with the roommate. But before we start the reading, I did want to just talk about some stuff, I guess, for a little bit. I will put a timestamp on the screen for when I actually start reading if you just care about the book stuff. Yeah, as I said, I put up my anti-TBR video up this morning, and for a majority of it, your guys' comments were very, like, positive and respectful, and you guys respected my opinion and respectively disagreed. It was great. I had, like, a very nice back and forth with somebody. Like, it was, it was great. There was one comment that they didn't like how it responded, so they deleted their comment, and that's okay. I feel like a lot of people were just upset because when somebody doesn't like your favorite book or like a book that you like, you feel as though it's an attack on you and your taste and what you like to read and all of that, and I promise you it's not. For example, I love the After series. I really, really love it. I don't consider it like my favorite series in the whole world, but I really do love it, and I've made countless videos about After. Positive, great videos about the series. However, pretty much all of booktube hates after. They hate after. They make hate videos about after. They hate read after. But do you think that I take that as an attack on me and on my taste in books? Of course not. I feel like they're allowed to make those type of videos. Obviously, I don't agree with them, but I'm not going to say that they're not allowed to make that kind of video. I have never once on my channel ever made a hate video about a book or an author. I have never hate read anything. I have never vlogged any of that type of content. I will never do that. That's just not who I am. It's not the kind of content I like to make. A majority of my content is positive and happy stuff. And I think as a person, but also as a channel, I think it is important for me to share some negative opinions or thoughts or whatever to be real with you guys, to be authentic. I think of it as like if I only ever make happy content, you guys are always just going to think that I like everything I read and that's not true. I mean, you know, I give more three stars than I give out five stars. If I only ever make happy content for the rest of my life, that's great, obviously, but sometimes it's kind of boring. Like, sometimes it is refreshing to add in a possible negative opinion or comment or whatever. And it's not like I do it all the time, guys. Like, when is the last time I ever made a negative video or that I ever said something bad about a book? I don't even remember, to be honest. So, like, I, it's not... I don't do it every day. I feel like partially I should have included in the video. I should have said... Like, it's not a personal attack on you, and like, these are just my opinions and all that jazz. But I guess to be really annoying when you have to disclose that every time you have maybe an unpopular opinion. And to be honest, like, my opinions weren't even that unpopular. Like, a majority of the comments you guys left were agreeing with me. So, I don't even think my comments were that bad. Wouldn't you rather I not read a book than read it and completely shit on it? <laughs> anyway, so that wasn't really what I wanted to do this morning. I wanted to start off the morning reading, but I instead was replying to comments, which is fine. I also do expect to get, like, the occasional rude, mean comment when I make those type of videos. It always comes with that, and I understand that. Long story short, thank you for the entertaining morning. <laughs> I think the last time I have ever had to, like, deal with such negative comments was literally last summer when I made a book on haul video and I talked shit about Megan March. That is the last time I had to deal with negative comments. And then I think the time before that, it was either a after-related video or maybe even a Fifty Shades-related video, and it was just, like, haters saying shit that I just deleted their comment very fast because I don't care. <laughs> but I do want to say, like, I really appreciate all the kind and respectful comments that I got on my anti-TBR tag video. I really don't mind if you guys disagree with me. I think it's fine. Like, I think it's great if you have a different opinion than me. You can have a different opinion than me and still leave a respectful comment. I want to talk about, like, the job stuff because I just, I really want to talk about it. In my life 
and channel updates video. I talked about how I quit my job. It'll be an entire month on the 29th of April. I did get another job. If you follow me on Twitter, you know about this. Oh, I actually mentioned it in my spring reading plans video, how I had an interview. I did actually end up getting the job. I had orientation. It went fine, but I came home and I had to break down. <laughs> I laugh because I just knew that was going to happen. I knew I was moving too fast. I knew it wasn't a good idea. I applied to this job like three weeks before I quit my job. And so I forgot about it. They didn't contact me, so I just completely forgot about the job. I get a phone call. They start kind of interviewing me on the phone. And I was like, oh, okay. On the phone, they asked me like how many hours I'm looking to work. I said like 20 to 30. Then they asked me if we have like a busy week, would you ever consider working 40 hours? I'm like, no way. But I said, yeah, I guess, sure. <laughs> Which for reference, I never worked 40 hours on my old job. I worked a max of 30 hours so that the rest of my time off, I would focus on making videos and just living life. I also fucked up in the phone call interview when they were like, oh, do you ha have another job? Like, are you going to school? I should have said I have another job, but I totally blanked. <laughs> and I should have said I have another job because technically this is a job. I do make a little bit of an income from it. So anyways, I went into the in-person interview. It went well, but I led the interview with saying I had an at-home job and that I could only work a total of 25 hours a week, like max. They seemed very fine with that. So I got the job, which was very exciting. And then I went to orientation, which was like a full eight hour day of just information. Literally within like the first three minutes, they handed us our schedules and I was working 40 hours the week, the next week. I decided not to take the job. I called them early the next morning and I said, you know, I'm sorry for wasting your time, but I just, I can't do this. There were so many other factors that I considered when I quit or like when I decided not to take that job. And I actually got a comment from one of you guys, which I wanna read the comment out because this comment was posted like I think 10 minutes out of orientation. I genuinely feel like it was a sign for me and I was like, okay, I, I decided I can't do this, like whatever. So the comment was left by JD and they said, good for you for quitting your job and putting yourself first. I hope you're able to find a new job soon but if you feel comfortable fi financially, don't rush just because you have to. When you feel ready mentally and emotionally, then you should go back and try to find a job. They left this like 10 minutes after I got out of orientation and I was bawling my eyes out. And I read this comment and I was like, this is a sign. This is a sign to say I know I'm not ready. Part of me does feel bad because it would have been a really good job and I probably would have really liked working there. I was just like running high on a lot of emotions and taking this new job would have, honestly, it would have made me spiral, I think even more. And as you guys know, I haven't been happy in the last little while. Like I'm actually happy now, which is very weird. I wasn't happy for the longest time last summer and last fall. And in January, I wasn't really happy. I was struggling a lot and I actually finally feel happy and like I feel good. I am now just taking time to like really focus on myself. I'm exercising for the first time in a very long time. I'm reading more, I'm making content. I really wanna start cooking because I don't do that like ever. I order food all the time. I just really am taking this time to focus on myself and then, you know, in a month or two, I will, really start looking for a new job. I realized I was jumping way too fast and I didn't have time to process everything. And I feel so much better now. I'm gonna go start with the roommate. I'm very excited. We have two new roommates who move in together. I think our male character is a porn star. I'm gonna go start this now. It is around 4.30 and I am halfway through the roommate and I'm liking it. It's okay, honestly. I always feel like third person is really hard for me to get into books and to really connect with the characters and the story. So I am liking it, but I do find it a little hard to connect. I'm going to continue this, but I think before that I'm going to go work out. And then I need to figure out what I want to eat. 
I kind of want to order food. <laughs> yeah, so far it's a decent read, I guess. We'll see how I feel about the last half. So I think the last time I talked to you guys, it was like 4.30. And I was going to go work out, which I did do. I did a stupid thing where I barely ate today. Like, I barely ate this morning. I didn't realize until I was, like, going for my workout that I was like, shit, I didn't eat anything today. I did my workout, and I immediately had to sit down. And then I ordered food, so I had Chinese food. And I still wasn't really feeling good, so I had a nap at 6 o'clock. And I slept for, like, maybe 20 minutes but I still don't really feel the greatest, to be honest. I'm honestly really tired. I kind of just want to go to bed, but I also feel like I should read. But then I'm like, maybe I'll just wake up tomorrow and just truly focus on reading and like try to read three things tomorrow. It's now currently Sunday. I did not end up reading last night. And today I have very ambiguous plans. I am definitely going to finish The Roommate. I'm going to finish it right away. Then I am hoping to start and finish You Had Me at Ola. And then I hope I can actually start the X Talk as well. I don't think I'll be able to finish it all, but I do hope to start it. Maybe on Monday, tomorrow, I can actually finish the X Talk and maybe start Life's Too Short. I don't know. I have plans tomorrow. I am supposed to get a haircut. I'm also going to be running errands tomorrow, so I just don't know if I will actually have time to read tomorrow. I also have to clean my house because my kitchen is a mess. I will show you guys when I go clean it because it is disgusting. I have a lot of plans for today. Can I read all of this today? I'm going to go finish The Roommate now. Okay, so I just finished The Roommate by Rosie Dannon, and I liked it but it is a three-star read for me. Genuinely, there's nothing wrong with this book. I thought it was cute. I thought it was very steamy. I liked the overall message of this book. I don't know. I just felt like maybe I couldn't fully connect with the romance or the characters or something. So this falls Clara. Is it Clara? 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 Who moves to LA to live with her best guy friend who she has always been in love with and she thinks that she can convince him to see her in a whole new light and maybe see her as more than just a friend. But he ends up going on tour with his band and ends up renting out his room where she was like supposed to live and he rents it out to this guy named Josh who just so happens to be a porn star. Obviously they get to know each other more and they're both super attracted to each other. Josh has some issues going on with his job and they decide to create this website that helps women and partners have better sex. It's a very interesting premise and like I liked the whole message of the book and just how sex positive it was and all of that. I just wasn't fully into the romance or the characters. I mean, it was fun. I would definitely recommend it, but it was just a three-star read for me. So now I'm going to take a little bit of a break, probably like a 10-20 minute break, and then I'm going to start this one. I'm kind of scared because this one is also in third person. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed. I didn't like this as much as I had seen everybody else like it. Like, I know a lot of people gave it four to five stars. Even though it was very steamy and, like, it had a lot of sex scenes, I guess, or, like, sex-related things, I just feel like it lacked with, like, the character stuff or, like, it lacked with the plot. I'll probably just start, re like, start this and read half of it and then maybe clean my house. It's many hours later. I read... 121 pages or 20 pages of You Had Me at Ola, which I will talk about in a minute. So I read 120 pages, then I did a workout and then cleaned my house, which I do have some clips of me, well not of me cleaning my house, but the before and after. My house is a disaster. I honestly feel like if my space and my house isn't clean, I kind of feel dirty and like I feel like I'm a mess and I'm really unorganized. So I really try to keep my house as clean as possible all of the time. Um, I had a really rough week this week, so that's why my house was a little messy, but 
as I said, I'm getting my life together, so I'm very happy about that. Anyways, about the book. I am actually really liking it. I was a little scared because obviously it is in third person. As of 120 pages in, I like both characters, and I'm excited to see where the story goes. I also really like Jasmine's family. Also, Ashen's family too. I think like they both have very good family dynamics and I actually really like that in romances nowadays is like I I really enjoy when their families are actually a part of their lives because I'm very close to my family I'm literally gonna see my mom tomorrow and I called her I think three times today just to tell her stuff or like ask her something so I'm very close with my own family and I like seeing that in romance novels I just think it's really great also normally I don't like stories about actors for some reason. I feel like there are a few that I love, but I'm always hesitant to read books about actors. I'm liking it so far, so that's really good. I'm going to keep reading. I just finished You Had Me at Ola, and I really liked it. I think I am going to give it a four star. I liked both characters. I liked their romance. I liked all of the side characters. I liked the plot. There were times I was a little frustrated with Ashton because I mean, he kind of lied and he didn't share a lot, but like, I also understand that and I feel like it's kind of hard to be mad at him, <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like I definitely have to sit on it a little bit because even though I, I did like it, I feel like there was something missing just a little bit, but like other than that, I really liked it. So this follows two actors, Jasmine, she's been in the tabloids a little bit because of an ex-boyfriend and she kind of just wants to focus on her career and be a leading lady and not be mixed up in all these tabloids and rumors and stuff and she is just focusing on starting her new show and Ashton is going to be her new co-star and he has been kind of struggling with his career a little bit. He wants to have a very successful Hollywood career. So he's trying to take on different parts and he's hoping that this show will take his career off essentially. But he's hiding kind of a secret and it's weighing on him a lot. And obviously they both get to know each other very well because they're co-stars and they have to kiss and their characters have a romantic relationship. So, you know, they're just slowly falling in love. I liked it. I definitely liked it. I don't even know what time it is because my phone is dead, but I am going to take a little bit of a break and then I will start this. I don't know how far I'll get into it, but I will definitely start it tonight. I'm excited to read this, but I have heard some mixed reviews and I remember when ARCs came out, like everybody was giving it five stars and that's like all I had seen, but after it came out, I was seeing more like three stars. I'm actually gonna go shower <laughs> and then I'm going to start this one. It's been a couple of days. Honestly, I have been so busy. I feel like I've barely been able to read and get things done. I feel like this vlog is gonna be really messy and I'm so sorry for that, but I don't know, life is just busy. I think the last time I filmed, I was gonna start the X talk which I did not end up doing. I read, I think, the first two chapters, and then I just couldn't read. I wasn't in the right mind frame, so I put it down. Yes, I got a haircut, which I did do two videos already with my haircut, so this is old news. I think I'm gonna change my reading for both of these. I read some reviews after I went on Goodreads and I looked up what people had said about these and I've realized in this one our female character, obviously she has a lot of family issues, specifically with her mom, and you never really see that in the book. Like you never see her actually have a conversation with her mom or like actually deal with those issues and so part of me feels like she didn't have like a full character development and like growth because 
she didn't really deal with her mom. The more I think about it, the only thing I really liked was how sex positive and how steamy it was. And so I kind of want to end up giving it two stars just because I want to give this one three stars instead of four stars. I just don't feel like it is a four star. It's like almost a four star for this one. Again, I read some reviews and a lot of people said that this, there was a lot of telling and not showing. And I do agree with that. That the author told you how much they liked each other and how much they were falling in love with each other, but barely showed it, if that makes sense. Sadly, I'm gonna end up giving this two stars and this one three stars. Because I liked this one a lot more than The Roommate, but I still don't feel like it's a four star. Also, I did look it up and the next book is about Michelle which I'm very excited about, and I will definitely pick that one up. I feel like this is an author I should really stick with because I can see the potential, and I can see that one of their books may end up being, like, a good favorite. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to check out the next one that comes out this September, I do believe. I just wanted to add more on my thoughts on this, and I've also realized to not potentially spoil my vlogs, I have decided to withhold rating them on Goodreads, so I won't rate these on Goodreads until the video goes live or a couple days after this vlog goes up, just because then I feel like you guys already know my feelings on them because you saw my ratings. So today's plan, I'm reading both of these today. That is the plan. I'm going to start with this one, obviously. I really, I really got to read today, guys. I really don't want to prolong this. So I'm going to go get a good start on this one. I am currently 164 pages in and I'm liking it. I feel like the beginning was a little slow but now that they've actually gotten into the radio show it's gotten a lot better. I feel like the lie will really blow up in their faces and I just don't know how that's gonna go down but I'm very interested to see what happens. So essentially this follows two co-workers who work at a radio station. The radio place needs kind of like a better segment, a better show, and our female character suggests a show about two exes who talk about dating and relationship advice. And their boss suggests that they do it together because they constantly bicker and they don't fully get along, but they've never actually dated. They now have to lie that they're exes and they try to do the show. I'm not explaining it very well, but so far I really like it and we'll see how this last half goes. But yeah, it's it's something fun. You know, if you love enemies to lovers or hate to love, you'll probably enjoy this. I finished the X talk and I am giving it three stars. It has been a couple of hours since I finished this. I really just wanted to process it, I guess, and to really think about it. I did like it. I did think it was a fun book, and I personally am not one who enjoys when books insert, like, lyrics or, like, poetry lines. Like, you know, if the book is about an author and it inserts like a paragraph from their book, I normally don't care. And for this, I was actually really glued into the um, radio parts. So yeah, I liked the radio stuff. As I said, it was a little slow to get into at first. I do feel like Shay overreacted towards the end. I understand like why she was upset and I do feel like it was valid for her to be upset, but also I feel like she blamed everybody else but herself in that situation when she was, you know, kind of a little bit at fault. And I mean, she was mad at Dominic for a valid reason, but I mean, he was clearly struggling with something. In that moment, he physically and like mentally just couldn't do anything. So I don't really blame him. And she just kind of like didn't let him explain himself and talk about it. That whole situation towards the end definitely gave Shay a reason to kind of develop as a character and like to figure out what she wants out of life. I have another one of uh, Rachel Lynn Solomon's books on my TBR. I have one of her contemporaries or her YA contemporaries. I still want to read that one. Maybe I will enjoy 
her YA stuff better. I don't know. It was still fun. I just, I couldn't fully connect or like fully be immersed. I do want to say right now I'm struggling a lot and I think you can tell with just how I'm reading these books. I haven't loved a book in a while. I feel like all the books I'm reading are mediocre and I don't know if that's just me or that's just what's out there right now but even a lot of indie romances that I've been reading also haven't really done it for me. I'm just not finding anything that I'm loving right now which really sucks. Done the X talk. Now I'm about to start Life's Too Short which I am very excited about because the friend zone I had given five stars the happily ever is that what it's called there's a typo there's a typo on the back here from the best-selling author of the happy ever playlist but it's called the happy ever after playlist but I gave the happy ever after playlist four stars I really enjoyed it but I obviously loved the friend zone and I'm curious to see how I feel about this one. I've heard it's a lot more heavier. I think so far what I've really loved about Abby Jimenez's books is that she includes a very heavy amount of romance. I definitely have plans to read the entire thing tonight because I would love to finally finish this video. It's been dragging on for almost a week. I also just want to say like take my readings and my reviews with a grain of salt because Clearly, I am struggling with books and just reading in general. I also feel like that in general is always helpful to see other people's reviews because sometimes I can't fully explain my thoughts. And sometimes I'll read somebody's review and I'm like, yes, that is exactly what I was thinking, but like I couldn't put words to it. Just because I didn't particularly enjoy some of these. I mean, I enjoyed them for what they were. I just didn't love them. Anyways, enough talking. I'm going to go ahead and start to this. I am currently 186 pages in. I'm at chapter 14 and I'm really liking it. It's probably going to be a four star read. I just really like the way that Abby Jimenez writes. A lot of times her characters are just having a conversation and that's the way you get to know about a character's job or a character's family life instead of the character having inner dialogue and explaining things to you she writes them where they're having a conversation with another character and you get to see it that way and I really really like that sometimes I hate when books are really really heavy on inner dialogue or like description and they don't have actual dialogue between characters. Like, I prefer a lot of dialogue going on. I feel like Abby Jimenez is really great with that. I like how her books are in first person and dual POV. I really enjoy that. I'm usually not a fan of when a character is a YouTuber or blogger, vlogger. I really don't like that in books because, obviously, I do that too. And... It's just weird, like sometimes authors don't really get it right, or sometimes they make it too much about the internet stuff. I think it also helps that I just really like the characters, and I like how they're, they have like this really nice slow romance, but they have a really strong friendship. Like right now, they're attracted to each other, and they spend a lot of time together but they haven't even like kissed yet and normally I would not be about it but the way that Abby Jimenez just writes her characters in the story it works and I definitely feel like at this point Abby Jimenez is an autobi author for me I have really enjoyed her books I'll probably end up reading anything she puts out in the future so yeah I'm really liking this I'm going to go ahead and finish this now I finished it and obviously I loved it I'm giving it four stars I really liked it. The reason why I'm not giving it five stars is because it did drag a little bit. Like, I, I do feel like it was a little long. I still really loved it. Like, I just thought it was really good, and I loved the characters and the romance. The plot was a little bit more serious. I feel like this is kind of what I expect from Abby Jimenez now. Her books have heavy topics, but the romance is... I feel like are very joyous. I don't know, I really love her books and just the way she can mix sadness but also happiness together. It just, it really works for me anyways. But this falls Vanessa and Adrian who are neighbors. One night Adrian can't sleep because he hears 
a baby crying in the apartment next to him and it's like four o'clock in the morning or something so he goes over to that apartment to kind of complain about it and Vanessa answers the door and that interaction doesn't go very well but Adrian sees that Vanessa is clearly struggling so he offers to help her take care of the baby for a couple hours so that she can shower and have a moment to herself. It kind of starts this friendship between the both of them and they just start spending all of their time together and it slowly blossoms into this beautiful but heartbreaking romance. I also feel like the misunderstanding was kind of obvious but also at the same time like it wasn't. I don't know I feel like they both had the right to react the way that they did. I just really enjoyed this. I thought it was good and I highly recommend it and I'm happy this vlog ended on a high note. We ended up with a four star. I am probably going to go to bed now and I will definitely think about this book and the other books I read this week and I'll kind of give a wrap up in the morning. So I was editing this vlog and I realized I did not finish it and I didn't take a thumbnail so that's why I'm in the same pink shirt as the beginning. This vlog is already very long so I'm just gonna quickly go through the books that I read and what I rated them. So The Roommate by Rosie Dannon I gave two out of five stars. You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria I gave three out of five stars. The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon I gave three out of five stars. And the last book I read was Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez, which I gave four out of five stars. I feel like this vlog was kind of all over the place. It was very long, very messy, but I guess that's kind of life. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. And let me know if there are any other books that I mentioned in my spring reading plans video that you want me to vlog, because I probably would still vlog any of those other ones that are in that video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!